Hello Aquarius. So, welcome to my channel. My name is Billy Jo. Um, if you are not a regular subscriber, welcome. Thank you for joining me. If you have not, by the end of this video, I hope that you have enjoyed it enough to hit the subscribe button. Um, may, make sure to hit the like, thumbs up, and to um, leave a comment, leave your feedback. So, this is recorded for July 2020, but is my intention that every video of mine, um, it's watched when it's meant for you to be, for it to be watched. So even if you watch it from a year from now, or if you watch it in a couple of months, whenever you're led to it, that's when you're intended to see it. Also remember, only take parts of the messages that resonate. If it don't, if it don't resonate, if it don't fit, don't force it. Because, honey, we ain't got enough loot for that. So, what is going on for you in the next month, Aquarius? Now, this can be Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, or maybe even your Venus. Remember, if your Sun doesn't fit, you might want to try one of the other signs. Because I can tell you, I'm a Cancer Sun, and most of the time I don't fit in that. I fit with the, my Moon sign is in Aquarius, so most of the time I fit with that one. So what is going on for you in the next month, Aquarius? So we have the Page of Earth. So the Page of Earth is like the Page of Pentacles, the Page of Coins. So it's very slow moving energy. Um, the Page of Earth has to do with things in this physical 3D realm. And pages are usually, uh, you know, they're scholarly. They like to learn things. Um... They are in a progressive state. So, uh, of course, the card says scholarly, dependable, patient, successful, good news about financial matters, wanting to do something more challenging, and possibly a new area of study. We will get some clarifiers. So, what else is going on for Aquarius? Some of you may actually be going to college. Maybe you're, you're, or you're maybe learning a new trade. Um, and just, you know, maybe this is just describing you that you tend to be, you know, successful, dependable, reliable, responsible. We have the page of air. So we have another page. The page of air is swords. You know, um, the earth energy is... Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo, and of course the air would be you, which is Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. So the page of air, they're logical, honest, sometimes impulsive, they're curious, um, sometimes they like to be a little spontaneous. It says challenging information delays or changes to plans. Truth delivered without tact. So, sometimes this represents someone who comes in and tells you something that maybe you didn't want to hear. Um, maybe sometimes it talks about having blunt honesty. So, um, this talks about the page of earth and the page of air. So, possibly you are someone who is, you're, you're a friend who is down to earth, who you know, most people feel like they can de depend on you. You're reliable. Um, sometimes you're patient with people. I think it's like, it, it depends on what you want to have patience with. Um, but you are logical. You're bluntly honest. <laughs> sometimes you deliver words without tact. You know, you just kind of blurt it out like there's no, um, there's no filter. <laughs> we have the Eight of Air. So that's the Eight of Swords. This is an illusion of being trapped. A lack of self-confidence. Afraid to take action. So in the regular tarot, this has to do with... Um, in the regular tarot, it's a picture of a woman with a blindfold on, trapped in a circle of swords. and But her arms are free or, you know, something like that to where she can actually take the blindfold off and kind of walk through the swords. But she feels like she's trapped. So this has to do with a false um, feeling of entrapment. So um, it's like you've waited for a while um, but now you're about to just jump right off the horse 
and take action because you feel like you're cornered. You've been feeling like you're cornered and you want out. Bottom of the deck is the two of air, which has to do two of swords. It's like being stuck, being in a stalemate. You know, it's like I'm going on with your life and pretending like there's not an issue happening. You're just kind of stepping back into what was or that illusion of entrapment, you know, that, that problem, that situation that wasn't really going anywhere. And you're just pretending like there's nothing wrong. You know, you're just like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to keep going because there ain't no solution. And this is covering the Hermit, Archangel Raziel. Spend time in quiet meditation, spiritual teaching, self-discovery. But when I see the two of air over the Hermit, I'm just sensing this feeling of, because um, there's two here. So maybe you're in a partnership, but most of the time you feel like you're doing things by yourself. You're doing things alone. And um, you've gotten to where you feel like you can only depend on yourself. You want something done right, do it yourself. Um, sometimes when you get frustrated, you just kind of mouth off how you feel without, without, you know, without any tact because you're like, damn it, I'm tired of this shit. Why don't, you know, I don't want to throw no hints. I'm just going to tell you how it is. So let's get some clarifiers. Spirit, why is the page of earth here? Let's clarify the page of earth. So we have the number 33, door to romance. You see how there's the door to a romance is open, but you got to have the key to unlock the cage. Well, look here. There's a key hanging off the door right here, but you're going to have to get it. You have to take a leap over this puddle of water and unlock the cage to let all these hearts through. So you're a little closed off. You're not one to, you know, huh, you're not one to just be all lovey-dovey. And, you know, maybe you need to unlock that cage. Maybe you need to let someone in. Um, maybe someone needs to let you in. So, let's get the clarifier for the page of air. The page of air. We have the number 41. Um, Brace into number 5, seventh chakra, Archangel Yariel. So, the seventh chakra, that's the crown chakra, and um, that has to do with connection to your your higher self, to source, to um, following your intuition, listening to your inner guidance. Sometimes maybe you need to think before you speak. I know I'm going to be hitting some nerves. <laughs> I can feel it. I'm going to be hitting some nerves. I'm going to get some thumbs down with this one. That's okay, honey. But... I'm not going to sugarcoat shit. I'm just going to tell you the way Spirit's telling me. Now, why is the Eight of Air here? Why is the Eight of Air here? We have the number 34, which breaks into number 7, door to personal healing and happiness. You can open that door. You can find that rainbow and that dove for peace and all that happiness and all that stuff. Or you can be stuck in here with all these vines knotted up and growing everywhere and getting on your damn nerves. It's up to you to break through. It's up to you to unlock that. Because you have adjacent possibilities. Number 24 breaks into number 6. You have all these doors. You have all these options that you can choose that lead to caring connections. So you, Aquarius, have other people that's vying for your attention, but you're staying in this situation where you're stalemate, where you're stuck, where, you know, you feel like you want it right now, but um, <laughs> someone's got that door locked. It's like, it's not going anywhere. And I'm feeling it's not just you, it's this other person as well, because we got the two of air here. There's two of you facing off each other. See the two unicorns, they're facing off. It's not just you. It's both of you. Both of you need this freedom. Both of you have other possibilities that can lead to happiness. Caring connections that make you both happy. But it's the choice that you're going to have to make to set each other free. So, <laughs> even though I feel like that has to do with, for some of you Aquarius's relationships... Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull some cards for 
um, from the Enchanted Love Trail to look into your love life. Whew, that felt heavy, Aquarius. That was some heavy information. So, Aquarius. Spirit, please tell us what is going on with Aquarius in their love life. What is going on with Aquarius in their love life? So, first card out the deck. We have the Eight of Shells. It's the Eight of Cups. It says Sacrifice. Um, so, usually the Eight of Cups has to do with me. That has to do with walking, with walking away from something that no longer serves you. You know, it's taking that sacrifice. Taking that first step. You know it's not working out, but you've got to, you know, are you going to take that first step? Are you going to walk away? Or we have the Nine of Wings, Obsession. That's the Nine of Swords. That's where you're waking up at night with a headache, stressed out, you can't sleep because you got all this anxiety, you know, it's, it's kind of like having nightmares and... <laughs> But you, it's, it's up to you to take that step, to walk away from that stress, from that anxiety, things not working out. Five of Shells, disappointment. There's been disappointment in this connection. Five of Shells is the Five of Cups. That In, in the regular tarot, that is a symbol of usually a woman, um, you know, she's got three cups she's looking at glass that's shattered and broken maybe there's three times you and this person have broke up um, maybe that's just representing all the times you fought fought and all the times that you know you got two cups there you're holding on for dear life you're holding those two shells you're trying to you're like being hopeful don't break these last two shells they're soulmate shells they're soulmate cups don't break them you know you're terrified of those being broken you're barely hanging on for dear life, Aquarius. Five of gems, anxiety. That's a five of pentacles. That's holding on. Possessiveness, obsessed and, obs and possessive. That's you clinging on with your claws. Seven of roses, that's a seven of wands. Trying to have courage. You know, you're trying to keep that, again, you're just trying to hold on for dear life. You don't want to give up. You know it's not working. You know it's not working. But you're going to continue hanging on for dear life. Man, Aquarius, I was looking forward to having some uplifting messages. <laughs> uh, so let's get some clarifiers, okay? I'm sure y'all are ready to get done with this part. <laughs> some of you may already be clicking off the video because you don't want to hear it. So let's get a clarifier for the Eight of Shells. The number seven for move. If you want happiness, if you want that love, if you want a commitment that's going to be lasting and forever and full of joy and happiness and make you feel all them feels, you're going to have to move. You're going to have to make that step. You're going to have to get to stepping. You're going to have to move to something better. It's not that the person you're with is a bad person. Maybe y'all's just not good for each other. So clarifying for the nine of wings. We have the number six, third eye chakra. So that's the, the chakra that's located in your third eye, like in between your eyebrows. This is letting me know you intuitively know. You know it's not really going to work out. You know deep down that it's not going to. But... Through ego and self preservance you are clinging on. You're like, uh-uh, I ain't giving up. So clarifying for the five of shells. We have the number five, teach. The reason why you're still hanging on, you're hoping your person will learn and do some changing. Most of the time, that doesn't happen. You can't change a person. They have to want to change. And who's to say they need to do all the changing? Sometimes you got to do some changing too, Aquarius. It's not just the other person. Bottom of the deck is believe and succeed. So if you believe that this can work out, possibly it can work out. You know, the ship is moving up, moving to, you know, calmer seas. 
and it's over to share the love. So, if you believe, you know, if you continue playing, being optimistic, this is saying that possibly you can both share love to each other. Um, for some of you, um, this is actually... <sighs> It's telling me that you're going to have to do some compromising if you really want this to succeed. If you want this to work out, you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to continue to compromising and working with your person. For others of you, this is telling me that you need to move on. You know, if you can do this. If you believe you can do it, you can actually move on and find true love. So just take it how that resonates for you, okay? Now, I'm going to pull some cards to see, <laughs> Woo, see what's your shadow side. <laughs> I feel like we've already been getting some shadow for you, Aquarius, but I'm going to pull some cards from this um, Dark Night of the Soul Tarot by Angel of Mystic Moon. So, what's some shadow work that you're working on? Let's find something, let's dig something really deep. Find something deep, deep down that you're trying to, you know, you, something that's going to trigger you. We need something, if you ain't triggered already, honey, we're fixing to dig deep and find something to trigger you. So get ready because you need to do some healing. What do you need to heal? We have the Six of Torment, Stone Wall. You need to learn to open up. You need to be a little bit more vulnerable. You got your guards up. You're too guarded, Aquarius. You don't want to let nobody in. Number six of decay, taken for granted. You're scared you're going to be taken for granted. You're scared to be vulnerable because you're worried that you're not going to be appreciated for, for the love and devotion and, and everything you have to give. We have the number seven of torment, counterfeit. You're worried that if someone does give you love, that it's not real. You're worried that it's fake. Are they being fake? Do they really mean they love me? Or are they just using me because I'm convenient? Bottom of the deck is number 11, justice, corruption. You know, justice has to do with karma. But this is, you know, this is saying that um, there is no justice. There is no karma. You know, people getting away with treating you like shit. And you just got to eat it up. You just got to eat it and take it. Two of torment, deadlocked. You're stuck in a rut because you feel like, mm, my ship ain't never going to come in. Nothing good ever happens for me. I'm not going to be vulnerable because these fake ass motherfuckers. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, so Aquarius, let's work on some healing. So if that triggered you, no, you need to heal it. So, we're going to pull some Shamanic Healing Oracle cards. How can you work on healing, Aquarius? So, we have the number eight for death. You need to let go of some stuff. You need to purge. You need to let it go. So that way you can make room for things that, that's better for you. You got to close some doors. You can't open another door if you got the other one closed. So we have number three, slow but steady. You're going to have to take baby steps. Okay? You can't just rush into things. you got to be able to, to let things go. So that way you can grow. <clears throat> then we have the number 35, inner journey. So you need to do this... Start listening to that voice you have within. Um, I know, like, my daughter, she's an Aquarius. And um, <laughs> it kind of freaks her out sometimes when things happen that she thought about. You know, she's always said, Mama, I don't want to be like you. I don't want to be like you. I don't want to know things before they happen. That kind of freaks me out, Mama. But for some of you, Aquarius, you need to learn to listen to that inner voice. So that way you can do your work and you can continue on. Okay, now, I'm going to pull some cards um, for messages from your higher self. So the thing about your higher self, the thing you have to understand, or you don't have to understand, I'm not going to tell you you have to do anything, 
Um, but the way I like to explain it is um, I like to intend it in this world as the 3D world as an illusion. Um, in my belief, my belief is that we do live in illusion. And the life we live, the body you're in, is your avatar. Um, imagine like you're playing a video game. And the video game is is your life. Your body, your, t your body that you're in is your avatar. And the one controlling the controller is your higher self. So let's get some messages from your higher self. Let's get some downloads, which... To me, a download is kind of like getting a cheat code in a game, right? So let's get you a cheat code, okay? It says, who am I ready to forgive? Who are you ready to forgive, Aquarius? It says, I am not what happened to me. I am who I choose to become. Is it time to let go, forgive, and move onward? Is your soul ready to forgive someone else or yourself? Forgiveness brings sweet release, freedom, and insight. Look at it from their shoes. Notice how you grew and what you learned. Who do you want to become? And how is this re resistance holding you from what your soul wants? Today's soul action. Write a forgiveness letter. Then practice the... Oh, I can't say that. I'm going to try it anyways, y'all. Look. <laughs> I, I've heard it before, but anyways, I, I can't remember how to pronounce it. I'm sure some of y'all know how. So just forgive me if I don't say it right. Hop up and up. <laughs> y'all, I can't say it. We're just going to go with hopping, okay? <laughs> Prayer today while well, thinking of the person you are ready to forgive. I love you. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. So remember, the struggles and challenges that we go through, they're all learning lessons. You know, they're all meant to be learning lessons. That we That's why we have to learn from them. We have to, you know, then we have to purge the pain and let it go. And accept it as that lesson that we learned. So next, I'm going to pull a couple of, these, couple of these cards from the Rebel deck. I love these because they're so smart-assy. <laughs> I get tickled reading them. So what's some smart-assy cards you need to know? What is something you need to... <laughs> so stop texting. Stop stalking. Stop checking on that person. Just fucking stop. <laughs> Spend your time on someone worth it. Don't waste it on ridiculousness. Ouch. That's all I'm going to say is ouch. Some of y'all need to hear that. And then it says, have you eaten? You are acting like a big ass baby. You need food in your belly. Eat a fucking taco. <laughs> I can't. I can't. That's so funny. So, now I'm going to pull a couple cards from the Work Your Light Oracle deck. Just for, <laughs> just for some more messages from your higher self. I love all these messages. I hope you're enjoying them too. Even though your reading was a little harsh. You know, remember Aquarius. It's, it's harsh on me too. My moon is in Aquarius. So, sometimes I tend to be blunt as well. There's parts of that message that I need to hear as well. So, we have boundaries. Where do you need to establish better boundaries? So, in order to raise your vibration, sometimes you just got people reaching in saying, gimme, 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 gimme. Sometimes you got to say, no, put that boundary up. Say, uh-uh, not today, Satan. <laughs> then we have share your voice. Come out of the cave persecution and expression so stop holding back you know there's some of you that you know i was telling you in the beginning that some of you just really need to learn how to you know think things before it comes out your mouth but um there's you know 
some of you really need to learn how to say no. You know, you need to learn to say no. Don't say yes. And I think a lot of people's problem is that where um, when they really want to say no, they're like, ah, oh, okay. They go ahead and say yes anyways. And if they really want to say no, I mean, say yes, sometimes they say no. So just learn to do what you, you know, do what you say, say what you mean, and then act accordingly. Um, you have a blunt, no-filter tongue for a reason, Aquarius. <laughs> Don't try to accommodate nobody but yourself. Learn how to walk in your truth, okay? Not in other people's truth. Not what they want. But what's going to actually bring you joy? And what's going to bring you happiness? So, the last card I'm pulling is from the Yogic Path. So, let's see here. I pulled the Mahadara card. So, let me get that pulled up. I believe that's the first chakra. 49. Page 49. Yes, I was right. I was right, y'all. <laughs> so, Mahadara, uh, Mah I can't say these words. I'm going to be real. I cannot say them very well. It means the root chakra, the base chakra. You have arrived in a place where you are very grounded in life. Your ideal home is in the process of manifestation, and you are setting roots where you are. This reflects the deep healing work you have done to undo the ancestral ties that were previously holding you back. When you heal your personal life, you heal the lives of all those who came before you and all who will come after you. Ancestral hardships such as poverty, immigration, war, slavery, and abuse have come to an end, and you have set the path for a new way of being for all of your ancestors to come. Thank you for doing this work and anchoring deeply within. It is only when you heal the root that the tree can grow. So that that kind of hits home right now um, with, with everything crazy going on in the world, all this... Um, you know, everything just going on, you know, with the COVID-19 and, you know, I, I'm just someone who believes that everyone has a purpose here. And with that being said, um, you know, the word slavery just um, is going to trigger a lot of people right now because Black Lives Matter and... Um, that's something that everyone needs to realize. Um, it, it seems like it just keeps happening over and over and over again. And it, it's time for some changes to be made. Um, so it, it's very important to work on this root chakra and to heal it for all of our ancestors. And for, uh, you know, everything that's going on in the world right now. So... I know that's going to trigger a lot of people, um, but I do appreciate you watching. Um, please make sure you do work on your healing, not only for yourself, but for your future generations and for your past generations. And make sure you can, for those of you that need to hear this, you need to use your voice. You know, learn to use your voice. Set boundaries. Um, there's things sometimes for healing you have to let go of for progressive forward movement. Um, there's things that need to be healed, things that need to be purged, not just within ourselves, but in our societies as well. Okay. We need to work together on purging these things. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you liked the video, please like, share, comment, subscribe. I love reading your feedback. Y'all have a beautiful, blessed day. Bye-bye.